One of the unique and useful things about Rebel is that it's just as easy to assign actions to a word as it is to assign data to a word. It works the same way. Uh, you choose a word of your of your own liking, uh, any set of characters. Uh, use the colon symbol to assign it to uh, a variety of actions. In this case, this is an example of something you don't want to do. Um, this is assigning the built-in right word to something new, something that wouldn't be useful. Um, and uh, it's very easy to protect against that. You just type in the word protect, and the rebel interpreter will um, not allow you to rewrite any of the existing words. But that can be a useful um, a possibility. You can, for example, uh, use words in other languages if you, if you want. You can um, assign the built-in words to do different things that make more sense to you. You can uh, create synonyms for existing built-in words that make more sense for you. That makes, uh, makes things very flexible. Um, you can also uh, assign a number of actions to a single word. In this case, uh, the word some actions, that's a single word because there's a dash in the middle, um, so it's a single string of characters. Um, that dash counts as a character. That's assigned, using the colon symbol, to a block of actions, three actions, alert, a print, and a write. And um, if we paste that into the rebel interpreter, you'll see that those actions are assigned just like um, data. Now some actions refers to those three actions. And using the word do, using the function do, it will do those uh, three actions. There's the first action. There's uh, the second action, print. And then here's the third action. And all those happened just because we did that one now action word. Uh, it's not really an action, or it's not really a function at this point. In order to do that, we need to insert the word does. What the function does does is it automatically executes those actions every time you type in the word. So now if I type in more actions, it will do all three of those things without having to use the function do. And there are the three actions assigned to more actions, and I didn't have to type in do more actions. So more actions is now a built-in function, and it works just like any other function built into Rebel. It's a, it's a word that Rebel understands, and uh, it does those actions whenever it comes across that word. Uh, here's another example. This is an example that uh, may remind you of old basic programming languages. The word CLS, or in the case of old uh, basic, the function CLS, would clear the screen. In Rebel, the words that you use, the text that you use to clear the screen is a little obscure. You have to type this whole set of characters. It might be a little bit easier for you to remember the word CLS. Um, so we can assign that uh, its own action. Use the letter CLS to represent this set of actions. Now when we type CLS, it clears the screen. We can do that with anything. Here's a little more complex um, program. This is a function. Automatically is executed anytime you type in the word send hyphen email. And what happens here is uh, we get an email address from the from the user using the request text function. Uh, there's some options here that uh, change the way that default uh, request text function looks. And there's a little, um, little trick here that it's very important. Um, this is a um, converter, basically, a function that converts the information put in or, or returned from the user by the request text function. And it converts it to a format that Rebel knows is an email type of data. And there are a lot of these little converter functions. 
Uh, you can convert to strings, you can convert to URLs, you can convert to money, you can convert to um, all the different data types that, un that REDL understands natively, and there are a bunch of them. Um, and that's one of the great things about REBEL is that it automatically understands a lot of data. So what's happening here is we're getting an um, email address from the user, converting it to an email data format, and assigning it to the word email address. Um, we're also requesting some message text from the user, and assigning it to the word message. And then we're using the function send to send to that email address above that message and then to alert the user that their message has been sent when that's completed. Um, that whole series of actions is assigned one word called send email. And you get a nice little, basically a little program that's assigned to that, that word send email. Anytime you type in send email or if you use it in a program, it'll go through that whole thing. It'll grab a, an email address from the user, it'll grab a message from the user, it'll send that and it'll let the user know it's done. A useful, useful little function. Um, and that's useful. The does function is, is very useful. Um, it lets you assign all these, uh, you know, actions, whatever you want, to a single word. Here's a simple little function, similar to what we've seen so far, um, which will print the square root of four, the number two. So we pop that into the interpreter, and if we do. Wherefore, it'll tell us every time that that's two. And that's not so useful. Um, if we want to do something a little more specific using changeable data, not just the square root of four, for example, um, we use the, the function word func. Um, what that lets us do is assign some changeable data, a variable, to be passed to that function, to be used in that function. Um, so that when we're programming or when we're getting information, for example, from a user, we can work with the data that's, uh, that's necessary in, in each case, uh, which is much more usable in this case. Um, and here's an example. The function square var is square variable, basically, um, is a word that, that we're going to assign to this function. And the way this works is the number or, or the variable that you want passed, that you want used in that function, is put in a block. So this is the order. Func takes some names of variables to be passed to this function. And then the actual function is included in the second block. And that can be, again, any, any set of actions that you want. And it'll use that variable in, in the uh, execution of the function. So here what's happening is we're getting a, a number we're going to use a number, uh, which we call a number. And then in here, what's going to happen is we'll print the square root of 4 plus that number. Um, put that into the Revel interpreter. And what happens now that square hyphen ver is defined to, inter to the interpreter, and it knows what to do with the variable or the number or the uh, the data immediately following it. So what's going to happen in this case is it's going to print the square root of 4 plus 12. 4 plus 12 is 16, so it's going to print the number 4. If we change that number, the number that comes right after the function, now it's going to print the square root of 96 plus 4, 96 plus 4 is 100, the square root of that is 10, so it will print 10 as the answer. Uh, 